Every new project begins the exact same way. A blank document and a mild sense of panic. And today we are going to turn into this into an actual management game concept, live by filling my three-page GDD template together. I'll explain why I write it, what I write, and how each line forces decisions that will save you months. By the end, you'll be able to fill in your own document, and if you want feedback, drop it in the GDE Discord so we can kick the tires together. A quick note on the theme, because I'm borrowing the aesthetic spirit of a certain post-collapse, neon-lit wasteland that fans of Rise of Industry might recognize. And fun fact, the futuristic idea existed well before the 20th century setting won out because marketing. Usually is what happens. You need to optimize for the audience that exists, and then you can revisit the weird ideas once you have a solid foundation. In other words, today we finally indulge on the weird one. And for context, Rise of Industry, Roy, was a supply chain tycoon released in 2019 with my former dev company, Pepper Penguin Studios, and had a focus on finding demand and building production chains to serve it, not just moving trucks around for the sake of it. And the later 2130 expansion, it took that core and pushed it into a bleak techno-industrial future with scavenged cities and advanced chains, which is exactly the flavor that I'll try to channel here while building something new. Okay, time to work. Page one. Open my template, link in the description, and pause the video so you can rewind and follow along. Working title. I like to pick something that reminds me of the mood and the verbs. Something like Foundry of the Fallen. I know. Or you can use Project Something. Every single game that I worked on starts with that. So Rise of Industry was Project Automata, Recipe for Disaster was Project Trattoria, and many famous ones like Overwatch was Project Titan, and you have Project Zomboid. Ba -ba -ba. You can change it. You, you are just iterating. You need to just name the document. Elevator page. One sentence. If it has a period, it's too long. For example, build order from decay as you scavenge ruined merga cities. Simple. Genre and subgenre. I'm writing management sim with supply chain economy, light colony survival, and systemic logistics is not a pure colony sim. We're not role-playing individual survivors with needs. We're just running an industrial backbones that lets those people not die. And the player fantasy is different. In management, you express power through systems and scale, not through character micro. In the target audience, the players who enjoy planning, long arcs, and the quiet joy of watching the graphs bend the right way people who liked Roy's production chains and research pacing, and fans of games where you just zoom out and see the plan take shape, rather than action-heavy micromanagement. Visuals, neon punk salvage, cold air, hard light, battered chrome, solar field stitched across cracked servers. Everything that kind of reminds you of a civilization that tried to automate everything and ended up automating the collapse instead. The soundtrack, I wanted to keep it restrained, machine adjacent, with a hopeful pulse that swells when systems synchronized. Art-wise, I tried something between Blade Runner and Tron Legacy. References? The base game DNA comes from a realistic chain builders like Factorio, and then pushed towards post-industrial ecology, rather than cyber wizards and lasers. <laughs> there are lasers, but still. Mechanically, we need to study transport friction, pollution feedbacks, and region permits. Aesthetic references sit closer to ruin reclamation instead of clean sci-fi utopia. It needs to align with 2130's premise of mining fallen cities. Again, we are studying the mechanics, not copying looks. And now, off to the real meat. First pass loop, very broad strokes. Collect, process, build, expand, survive. Cool, generic, but yeah. Second pass, 
scavenge ruins for rare salvage, refine into clean inputs and assemble critical infrastructure. It kinda anchors the verbs to the fantasy. Now, player fantasy. Keep the lights on, tame entropy with spreadsheets and steel, because some of us find poetry in that. And the emotion arc needs to be clear. You arrive in a dead district and you leave it humming with all the lights visible from orbit. And it feels like you imposed order through design and not through brute force. The progression, early game, leans on scavenging what makes you feel small. You rely on irregular salvage flows and temperamental machines. In the mid-game, you transition into locally sustainable inputs, solar glass, water recovery, blah blah blah. And late game needs to challenge you to stitch multiple districts into a resilient network that can survive shocks. I want the player to unlock planning tools alongside the tech for better forecasting, demanding modeling, and dynamic contracts because a management game is as much about information clarity as it is about shiny buildings. For the key systems, economy goes first. Demand needs to be legible and earned, not just some kind of random magic. Logistics go second, but not as Twitch delivery. We want to make routing straightforward and make the interesting friction live in capacity planning and geography. Morale and stability go third. You can Think a strike risk or maintenance schedules or clean air thresholds that affect the uptime rather than individual happiness bars. Original Roy was about finding demand and efficiently supplying it with layered chains and permits across all kinds of regions. We want to keep that backbone and bend it towards scarcity, salvage, and environmental threshold that matter to throw output. Now, the design pillars. Clarity first always. If the players lose, they need to know why. Then, economy is ecology. Pollution, power, water, and waste are all as real as steel and plastic. Build once, iterate forever. Systems need to be extendable without rewriting the rules. Unique selling point. A reclamation-driven economy where the map fights back through entropy. The fallen cities are not just the scenery, they're your early minds. As districts stabilize, salvage dries up, which nudges you towards clean production and inter-district trade. Your success changes your resource model, so you're always planning for the version of the world you're creating. Now let's sketch three concrete features that express this USP on day one. Salvage veins. Procedurally generated ruin sites that yield mixed salvage streams, electronic scraps, alloy panels, and broken composites. They need to be sorted before use. Another one is entropy pressure. If the power of filtration dips, equipment uptime falls and the fat rise. Everything throttles your output, but it doesn't spawn disasters every five minutes. And three, district mesh. You can buy permits to expand into neighboring zones and link power and water for redundancy. The region permits idea nods to Roy's macro structure while fitting the friction here. Quick assumption check. What is scarcity is not fun for some players. You can offer a reclaimer preset with abundant salvage or a pioneer preset with very tight scarcity and higher maintenance. So both planning styles can breathe. Now the tech arc. Start with sorting yards, air scrubbers, and makeshift turbines. Then you can pivot towards clean glasswork, polymer refabs, and algae bioreactors. Of course, you need to put a fancy word after something standard. Top out at a district scale power stabilization, grid batteries, and automated maintenance collars. And for flavor, we can keep one guilty pleasure tech that is a money sink but looks amazing, like a solar tower that pulses brighter as you balance the grid. In 2130 expansion, and because it leaned into a technologically advanced lines and mining from fallen cities, we are taking that inspiration but writing a new tree around reclamation and resilience rather than just pure futuristic bling. In the moment-to-moment, -moment, the satisfying loop is watching chaos cohere. 
conveyor stops starting and the stock buffer smooth spikes and the light hold during a sandstorm. Every build has to ladder up to that feeling. Now, this page is not just paperwork, it's guardrails, and it keeps your dream from drifting away into a five years odyssey. And it's not a hyperbole, it's what happened to us, so please learn from my mistakes. In the platform, PC first, mouse and keyboard. Forget controllers and consoles. The heritage here is very PC forward, and both Unity and Godot deliver solid prototypes for grid-based sims very quickly. And you know my history with Unity for Roy. Unity still has a deep toolchain for tycoons, even though Godot now is tempting if you want leaner builds or you want a prototype very fast. MVP moment. Just one minute of play that sells the fantasy. You bring power online in a dead district. The camera pulls back, the city blocks flicker awake, and your throughput graph steps up as the filters drop the fact rates. That moment is the trailer. The 2130 pitch made the mining from ruins idea instantly legible, which is a reminder that your MVP needs to be visible in a simple GIF. 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 Milestones. Prototype in just three weeks. One district, three chains, one shock event. The core loop, you can do it in 10 to 12. You can add research, region permits, and stability systems. The vertical slice for the Steam page needs to have a real save, a real fail state, and a 30 minute compelling loop. Early access only when the full map can be stabilized with at least two district links and a clean upgrade path. Baseroy went early access and then 1.0 in 2019, and that allowed us to validate the cadence of building with the community. You don't have to launch in early access, but you need to plan how you will learn in public. For the launch plan, Steam page as soon as you have the MVP GIF. The tags need to reflect what it is. Management, economy, city builder, resource, Everything with a clear reclamation flavor in the capsule and the first line in the store. The dev logs need to absolutely focus on the systems maturing rather than flashy assets. And if you want extra flavor, a short map from Ruins time lapse can be your recurring content pillar. Top priorities and questions. How deep should morale go before it becomes micromanagement? Where is the sweet spot for logistic friction so that planning is interesting but not fiddly? Which two chains best express the setting in the first 15 minutes? Team and roles. Solo design and production, one part-time engineer for tools, another one for shaders and VFX, and a freelance composer for the mood. Try to reuse the other Roy lessons about clarity with your community. The people will forgive rough edges if the patch notes show intense and the roadmaps are honest. Don't sell smoke. And here is where I'll try to save your scars. Keep the scopes honest. Every single new system has to justify itself in the loop and the fantasy, not just look cool. Don't overcomplicate delivery. The players enjoy planning lines and watching the map breathe. They don't like relaying 10 roads because the trucks mess up the pathfinding. The research needs to be readable with power spikes that feel like turning on a new wing of a factory. And remember how strongly the community responds with clear communication, wikis, and transparent roadmaps. Our early access journey worked because the players could see the idea and help shape it. And you can do that as well without repeating the past mistakes. But also, respect the power of a strong theme in the store presence. 2130 store made the future immediately legible. Welcome to the future. Mind the ruins. Build advanced lines. It told you with just one glance that this world exists and what you can do there. The capsule in the first sentence needs to do the same for Foundry of the Fallen or Project, whatever. What ifs 
What if scarcity was not fun? You can add an optimist mode where salvage is plentiful and power is stable so that they can focus more on creativity and elegant factory design. What if we remove the region permits? Then progression needs to shift to another gating access, maybe stability threshold or grid licenses. What if we added an unusual constraint like no heavy trucks? Then you can allow only trains and pneumatic tubes for late game, which forces a very different spatial puzzle and elevates station planning. Now, this three page GDD is just a starting line. It's not the Bible. You can print it, tape it to the wall, or pin it in Notion and update it the moment reality disagrees with your plan. Because if you want to build along, you can fill your version, but please do it this week, don't wait, and share it in the GDE Discord so we can all pressure test the loop, kill all those nice to haves and double down on the core. Every single big studio started with the same thing, a bad draft and a better plan. You cannot skip the bad draft, but you can make it shorter and smarter. See you next time.